Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Superhero Deep Dive. As always, I am your host Jason. I have a new episode, a great episode planned for you today. Um, I forgot to have a prompt set up for a web address that I am looking up right now as we speak. So I am stalling for time. But other than that, it's going to be great. Let me get my disclaimers out of the way and we'll get into it. Now, the information is pulled from different sources across the internet and may or may not be completely complete, but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero. Um, also, feel free to check me out every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the day on Outworld Fleet Radio. This is the prompt that I had forgotten because they updated their web address. It is Outworld Radio or Outworld Fleet Radio dot online. Um, like I said, you can check me out every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the day. You can ask, actually catch me on Twitter or Instagram as well under Super Deep Dive. And I try to use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. You can email me directly at B, the number four, it all, so B4 it all at yahoo.com. And the best place to catch me, at least my personal preference, is on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. I post um, superhero memes daily. I post the podcast here. I post um, funny animal videos throughout the week. All that good stuff. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Tell your friends. Have them do the same thing. All that good stuff. All right. Now, this week I am covering a... He's not super well known, but he is not as obscure either. He is the Red Tornado from DC Comics. Wow, what a character. Um, he's a big one. But, you know, you take for what it is. Um, okay, his real name is John Smith. And that's like his civilian name, because it's not like his... He, he's a robot, so his real name's really Red Tornado. But he goes by John Smith as well. Alright. The Red Tornado was formed with the merger of two entities, an android body created by supervillain T.O. Morrow, tomorrow, if you don't get it, now you do, and the Tornado Champion from the Earth-1 planet Ron. The Tornado Champion was a morally good part of the sentient tornado on Ron, known as Ulthun, the Tornado Tyrant of Ron. This being was defeated by Adam Strange and contemplated the nature of good and evil and decided that good was the superior force. Good choice. Ulthing was aware of Strange's adventures with the Justice League of America and in, and in a 1963 story, he decides to move to an uninhabited replica of Earth. Ulthing takes on the form of the Justice League. Its evil side, later known as the Tornado Tyrant, emerges and defeats Ulthing's Justice League. Determined to understand its failure, the Tornado Champion goes to Earth where the Tornado Tyrant emerges again and defeats the real Justice League. And in a second attack, the Justice League banishes the Tornado Tyrant to an antimatter universe, and they believe it is destroyed. The Tornado Champion ends his experiment with the Duplicate Earth and JLA and decides to continue being a hero. This story is later retconned in Justice League of America um, number 193, where the Tornado Champion tells JLA member Firestorm that it alone traveled to Earth in 1963 to recreate its failed battle against the Tornado Tyrant. After learning how to defeat its evil half, it returned to the replica Earth, defeated its evil half, and banished it forever. Forever. Sorry. Every time I see that word, I always do that. If not out loud, then in my head. I just had to express it verbally. All right. The next step in the Red Tornado's evolution came in the summer of 1968, although the story was not published until 1981. I don't know why they sat on this for 13 years. It's not particularly excellent. It's not like, man, this story is way ahead of its time. But, yeah. All right. But in this story, the Tornado Champion seeking an Earth where no one recognizes it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just funny. All right. 
seeking an Earth where no one recognizes it, goes to the alternate dimension known in the DC Comics universe as Earth 2, and encounters Tio Maro, a supervillain from Earth 1 who was creating an android to use against the Justice Society of America. Maro, attempting to dupe the JSA, gives the android Ma Hunkel's memory. The tornado champion enters the android body, causing a short circuit in Maro's computer which erases its memory. Okay, who is Ma Hunkel, you ask? If you look at like old Justice League or Justice Society comics, you'll see this person like running around with, it looks like a pot on their head. Not like a pot plant, but like a cooking pot. That's Ma Hunkel. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's all you need to know. I haven't done a deep dive on her because there's just not a lot of diving to deep into. All right. In 1968, Red Tornado appears at JSA, which is the Justice Society of America, headquarters on Earth 2 claiming to be the original Red Tornado. Although the JSA is suspicious, Red Tornado has all of Hunkel's memories. Maru has other robots attack a museum and vaporize relics, and the JSA responds. Red Tornado, programmed to appear inept and to keep the JSA from realizing its true nature, exposes the JSA to the dust created by the vaporization, and all except Dr. Fate fall into a coma, because that's what happens. Um, I know when I have to clean our house and it's really dirty, I too will want to fall into a coma until it's cleaned by someone else. It, it, it has not worked yet. But anyways, all right, they fall into their coma and JSA betrays his fellow members by telling, or Red Tornado betrays his fellow JSA members by telling them to use Morrow's energy weapons, even though they're in a co or whatever. Okay. The device is rigged to explode, put the JSA and Red Tornado into a coma again, and Morrow returns to Earth-1 to attack the Justice League. He puts the JLA into comas twice, so between the JLA and the JSA, they there have been four comas, okay? Like, like keep this in mind, there have been four comas. Like, it's not even a run-on sentence, they're not commas, they're comas. Anyways. Once with energy duplicates and a second time with energy duplicates of their deadliest enemies. Whatever, dude. Red Tornado, who is not incapac who is not incapacitated by the energy backfire of Earth 2, travels to Earth 1 and revives the JLA members who capture Maru, and then it later returns to Earth 2 and revives the JSA from their second coma, who admits Red Tornado to full membership in gratitude. Sorry, this is so dumb. Anyways, with no Justice Society comic book published at the time, Red Tornado's appearances were limited to JSA and JLA collaborations. These were popular, not because of Red Tornado. The JSA is my favorite superhero team of all time, followed closely by the New Warriors, like the classic New Warriors. Red Tornado had no part in that. Anyways. Okay. The collaborations were popular, and DC Comics usually published one a year. Red Tornado appeared again in 1969, traveling alone to Earth-1 with a warning. His warning was probably, leave me alone, don't be near me, or you'll get in a couple of comas. Anyways. The JLA ignores him as they battle a gang and try to save Hawkman, who has been turned into a pillar of salt. Which is very biblical. Let's hope it doesn't rain. As the JLA battles the demons responsible, Red Tornado, investigating where they came from, unleashes a gas which restores Hawkman. Because that happens. It then delivers a message, Aquarius, a living star has wiped out Earth 2 and the universe. Two weeks later, or two weeks earlier, Dr. Fate protected the JSA and Black Canary's husband, who was police detective Larry Lance, in a magic bubble. The JLA rushed into the Earth 2 universe that was destroyed, and finding themselves in Dr. Fate's bubble. Aquarius forces the mind-controlled JSA to do battle against the JLA, 
but his hold over them is broken when Larry Lance sacrifices himself to save Black Canary. The JLA tricks Aquarius into entering an antimatter universe where he is destroyed. So apparently this antimatter universe is kind of like their their end all be all, right? Is that is that another name for the Phantom Zone? If you know, please let me know in the comments. Um is the antimatter zone or antimatter universe the same as the Phantom Zone from Superman? Please let me know. Okay. In the next JLA and JSA collaboration, Red Tornado is captured by an alien known as Creator 2. Creator 2, who wants to merge Earth 1 and Earth 2 into a paradise, even though Earth 2 and its universe were destroyed, uses Red Tornado, who has been in both dimensions, to anchor this effort. Creator 2 servants incapacitate several JSA members, but the dimensions are already merging and several JLA members are rendered comatose. <laughs> This is coma number five. This is coma number five that that the red tornado is involved in. Just remember this. Okay. I don't know how many comas it takes to have permanent um, brain damage, but I'm pretty sure five is close to, if not exceeding that number. All right. The Earth One Green Lantern and the Atom realizes that the red tornado is controlled by Creator 2, and with the help of Spectre, who is not a JSA member at the time, um, Dr. Fate, Johnny Thunder, and Thunder and the Thunderbolt, they free Red Tornado and end the threat, although Spectre is presumed dead. Alright, Red Tornado has, his, has a final mission with the JSA in 1972. The JLA is being visit, visited by Elongated Man, Metamorpho, Zatanna, and Wonder Woman when the JSA calls for help. The JLA discovers that Nebula Man has created a planet-sized magic metal fist. <laughs> Sorry. Which is crushing Earth 2. The Earth, or the heroes to contact Oracle, a super being with vast knowledge, who tells him that only the seven soldiers of victory can defeat Nebula Man. However, he scattered them through time and the JSA and JLA began rescuing them. An old Seven Soldiers of Victory opponent, Iron Hand, also known as the Hand, is behind the Nebula Man's attack. When the last of the Seven Soldiers is retrieved, the JSA and JLA warn that Wing, the Crimson Avenger's sidekick, died, saving the Seven Soldiers of Victory from Nebula Man with a secret weapon. JLA's Wonder Woman defeats Iron Hand, but the device controlling Nebula Man is smashed, and he cannot prevent Earth's 2 destruction. Again. This is the second time it's been destroyed. After the Seven Soldiers of Victory recreate their weapon, Red Tornado takes the device into orbit. It detonates, killing him. Alright, so he's dead at this point. And with that being said, I am going to write down... Um... Who was that? The Crimson Avenger. That sounds like an awesome deep dive to do. So I am writing it down before I forget because I will. All right, Crimson Avenger. And I can't write on the lines on a notebook page. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, anyways. T.O. Morrow reveals that the supercomputer wrongfully predicted his death. When Morrow does not die at the end of the 28 day period, so he had a computer said he was going to die in four weeks, and he didn't. The computer uses future technology in an attempt to dematerialize him, because the computer cannot be wrong. Faulty programming pro divides Morrow into two beings. One was the original Morrow, um, and he materializes on an alien world where he discovers a uh, scepter-like device allowing him to control the planet's ecosystem. He kidnapped Adam's wife, Jean Loring, The Flash's wife, Iris West, and Linda Danvers, who was Supergirl, transporting them to his world in the hope of luring the Atom and the Flash. Although Mara defeats Adam and Flash, he had not counted on Supergirl's presence and is defeated. The other Mara remained on Earth. This version, which Mara believed was a future version of himself known as Future Man, was actually a mutation. He attempted to switch minds and take over Red Tornado's body. 
See, the first part, no one cared about. They're like, why is this part of it? Because it circles around Tarantino style. N not, not even, not even Tarantino. I just really like Quentin Tarantino. I got lost. Okay, here we go. He attempted to switch minds and take over Red Tornado's body. Red Tornado reversed the switch and Future Man died of his mutations. After Future Man's death, the original Maru escaped from prison, consulted his supercomputer, and learned how he had been split in two. With the computer's help, he attempted to determine what flaw had allowed Red Tornado to become independent and concluded that an outside force was responsible. In Justice League of America 193, which is in 1981, that this is the story that was um, held. Aquaman discovers Maru's hideout and is nearly killed when Maru uses his alien scepter. Maru attempts to dissect Red Tornado to discover the outside influence and releases the Tornado Champion. Look, I, this is dumb. He's a robot, right? He's still a robot. Why are you using words like dissect? He took him apart. You know, he turned him off, took him apart. But he releases the Tornado Champion. Tornado Tyrant! into the android shell tornado tyrant defeats the jfc or jla except for firestorm and the tornado champion tells firestorm about how he and his alter ego became fused with the red tornado android and firestorm firestorm replaces both sentient beings in the android body red tornado awakens and only firestorm knows his true nature his dual origin um, is not fully revealed until Maru recaptures him to learn how he became sentient. When Maru opens Red Tornado, the Tornado Champion and the Tornado Tyrant come out of the body, and the Tyrant had never truly left the Champion! After a battle with the JLA, Red Tornado is reassembled by Firestorm, and Tyrant and the Champion are returned to the Android with their memories erased. This, my friends, my wonderful superhero deep dive family, who I cherish. This is the story they sat on for 13 years. I wish they had sat on it on the toilet. Because that was a terrible story. All right, let's keep going. Red Tornado's friendship with Firestorm deepens in The Fury of Firestorm number 4, which was in 1982, when the supervillain Killer Frost freezes New York City. Her hold on reality weak, Killer Storm demands to be Queen of New York with movie star Kurt Holland as her consort. The JLA arrives to help, but Firestorm fights them off. Heading to the JLA satellite, Firestorm reveals his secret identities as teenager Ronnie Raymond and middle-aged physicist Martin Stein. While Stein works on a device to thaw the city, you know, we could use the sun, but anyways, um, Red Tornado takes Ronnie to Hollywood, but Holland rebuffs him. Firestorm later brings Holland to Killer Frost in New York, and Holland is Red Tornado in disguise the one member of the JLA immune to her freezing touch. Red Tornado uses a freezing unit hidden in his chest to immobilize Killer Frost because that is the best way to deal with an ice-based villain is to freeze them, right? And they work together to thaw the city. Gosh. I I feel like I let you guys down with with this because this is so stupid to me. If you're being entertained, thank you. This is not cool to me. <laughs> Alright. Red, Torna Red Tornado makes his final appearance in this original form. In the Crisis on Infinite Earths miniseries. According to books published by DC Comics, the multiverse was created when an alien scientist named Krona attempted to meddle with the creation of the universe. An embodiment of the power of the Earth-1 universe. The nearly all-powerful monitor discovered that the that an antimatter version, um, which is the anti-monitor, lived in the Quard universe. When a scientist named Kel Massa, later known as Pariah, destroyed his dimension, the anti-monitor became more powerful than the monitor. 
This led the Monitor to begin assembling his galaxy's greatest heroes and villain to aid his cause. The Monitor's assistant, Harbinger, um, has been possessed by one of the Anti-Monitor Shadow Demons. She kills the Monitor as groups of heroes fan out throughout space and time to turn on devices which are cosmic tuning forks. You know, those are the things like on Black Bolt's forehead. Um, the Monitor has placed to stop the advancing antimatter wave from destroying the universe. Or destroying the multiverse, I'm sorry. Okay, so after this, they said it was his final appearance. But later, Red Tornado makes his first appearance in Crisis on Infinite Earths number 4, which was in 1985. Oh gosh. Let's, let's hope this incarnation is better. Fingers crossed. The Psycho Pirate has been whisked away from his mission to protect a cosmic tuning fork. And Red Tornado and The Flash are similarly teleported away. The Anti-Monitor has kidnapped them and refashions Red Tornado's body into a weapon. Telling him that he is more than a machine and even more than a man. Which Red Tornado does not understand as do none of us. Under the Anti-Monitor's control, he wreaks destruction on a massive scale across Earth-1 and Earth-2, which has been temporarily saved from destruction, because we don't want it to be destroyed a third time, <laughs> before he is torn apart by a number of heroes. Okay, so he dies again. Supergirl seriously injures the Anti-Monitor and destroys the machine which was tearing apart the remaining universe before she dies. Red Tornado again appears in Crisis of Infinite Earths number 8. So his death, him being torn apart, only lasts 4 issues. When Firestorm the Atom and Blue Devil bring his remains to the Justice League satellite and bring Tio Maro there to repair him. A bomb inside Red Tornado goes off, destroying the satellite. <laughs> however, however, Red Tornado is still alive in the satellite's wreckage. Because why not? Um, in Justice League of America Annual Number 3, which was also in 1985, he links with the still functioning JLA computer to learn more about himself. A bolt of energy sends the wreckage down to Earth, where the Martian Manhunter finds Red Tornado's head. But Red Tornado sends his consciousness into a nearby Star Labs weather control satellite. Gathering energy to give himself physical form, he uses the satellites to wreak havoc on Earth. The JLA destroys the satellites one by one, eventually freeing the now Corporal Red or Tornado Champion. Red Tornado tries contacting Kathy Sutton with several electronic devices, and the JLA brings her to Tornado Champion, who says that he now has the power to remake worlds. Kathy convinces him that he needs to be more human to be accepted. Although he seems to believe Kathy, an attack by Superman angers him and he heads off into the universe. The Crisis on Infinite Earths ends when the Spectre confronts the Anti-Monitor at the moment when Krona creates the multiverse. Darkseed and the Earth-2 Superman then destroy the weakened Anti-Monitor. Okay. So I have a couple issues with this. Um... Star Labs has weather controlling satellites. They have weather controlling satellites. Maybe I don't understand. And if I don't, that's okay. Because it's a comic book. So it's not... Comic books aren't known for being plot heavy, right? Things change all the time. People come back from the dead. But if, if I had weather controlling satellites... The first thing I would do is make stuff grow in the desert because the desert is a wasteland, right? You don't even have to go to like the Sahara or whatever. I would start in like Arizona or something like that. Like have some stuff starting to grow because you know, um, Let's take the Midwest area of the United States. That's kind of like America's breadbasket. We get a lot of crops there. Why not expand that with the weather? Am I missing something? If I am, let me know in the comments. Like, let me know. Am I like, am, are the, you guys just like, Jason, you just don't know the long-term environmental effects. But I'm pretty sure 
deserts aren't super important when we could have fresh crops, right? But like I said, let me know if I'm wrong. But if I had weather controlling satellites, the first thing I would do is, is change that because I don't want there to be a food shortage anywhere. I've been hungry and yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways. All right, although Red Tornado's Android origin remained almost the same after Crisis of Infinite Arts, he was never again the Tornado Champion, which is, um, he, instead he was an air elemental created by Maya, which is the spirit of Earth, to protect the environment. Like other ele elementals such as Swamp Thing, this spirit needed to have a human host. The host was intended to be Professor Ivo's infant son, but the boy died at an early age and the elemental went into an android body created by Ivo. So if he needs a human host, what better place to go than an android body, a robot? Because because I love terrible storytelling. All right. Air pollution has an adverse effect on the Red Tornado, Tornado Champion body, driving him half mad and into conflict with Naid against Firestorm and the Swamp Thing in the Elemental War. Firestorm calms them both and makes a new body shell for Red Tornado. The new body is imperfect and he begins to malfunction. His humanity is almost lost as he looks increasingly damaged, dirty, and defective. During a period of near total malfunction, Red Tornado is a member of the layman. He experiences jerks and spasms as he moves. Sounds from malfunctioning gears and mechanisms emanate from his body and he speaks in a halting, emotionless, mechanical monotone. During his association with the layman, the original Red Tornado personality reemerges with his emotions and humanity. Red Tornado spends time silent and still in the empty JLA headquarters in Happy Harbor, Rhode Island, feeling isolated from humanity. You know what I do when I feel isolated from humanity? I isolate myself even more because logic. All right, when Robin, Superboy, and Impulse have a sleepover <laughs> over, at, over at the base, Impulse's behavior revives Red Tornado and reassures him that he is not as removed from humanity as he had thought, albeit because he realized that all three of them were annoying him. <laughs> what a great way to discover your humanity is to be annoyed by a bunch of freaking teenagers. That's awesome. That is probably my favorite bit from the whole Red Tornado saga. I'm just letting you know now. Like, to me, that's the high point. Anyways, regaining his abilities to move and communicate, Red Tornado reestablishes his connections with the Justice League and the superhero community. He advises Young Justice, assisting them on their missions as needed, and is an auxiliary member of the JLA. So, I want to know what his advisory role was. He's like, hey, if you do this, you're going to go into a coma. It'll be number, it'll be coma number six. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just ripping into him. All right. Let's see here. All right. After DC's Crisis of Conscience miniseries. Red Tornado is attacked by the surviving members of the original secret society of supervillains and his body is destroyed before the JLA arrives. Batman brings his remains to the Batcave and rebuilds an upgraded android body. When the League is attacked by Despiro, uh, Red Tornado helps defeat him since he is immune to Despiro's telepathy and mind control. Alright, uh, let's see here. Alright. Red Tornado is recruited by Donna Troy to fight the menace in space during an infinite crisis. According to a conversation between Doc Magnus and Tio Maro in 52, Red Tornado sacrifices himself during the crisis. So he's, um, he's dead again. Maro's response to the news is to ask how many times the tornado has died, and he alludes to the Red Tornado, Red Inferno, another android he created. All right. During the fifth week of the 52 event, after the heroes are beamed back down to Earth at Uluru, the tornadoed speaker, which is embedded in Mal Duncan's chest, plays a warning message for his comrades, saying, It's coming, 5252. 
Then in week 17 of 52, Red Tornado, which is in pieces, is being back down to earth with the other heroes and overlooked by the search team. Conscious but unable to say anything but 52, the tornado is discovered by a group of young, young aborigines in the Australian Outback. At the end of week 21, he is being reassembled with auto parts by an Australian mechanic. Malfunction but able to access his psychokinetic powers, in week 28 he is defeated by a group of inner gang enforcers evicting the tribe of aborigines from their shanty town. Disassembled again and trashed, his head becomes part of a contemporary art sculpture. Tio Mara buys the head, hoping to discover his secrets. As Mara is used as bait to trap Mr. Mind, Red Tornado's head falls into Rip Hunter's hands, and Hunter combines his head with his own time bubble to navigate to the restored universe. Alright. So he's, he keeps falling apart, he keeps dying. One year later, Red Tornado's android body is repaired. Kathy Sutton spends time with it, talking with Platinum, thinking that she has done this seven times before and waiting for John to come back to his body. His soul enters a human body offered by Felix Vals posing as Dead Man. When the Justice League of America calls him back as a member, John Smith returns as a human being and he has the same wind powers as his robotic form but lacks his android body stamina and resilience. Listen to this. Lacks his android body's resilience. The dude has been dismantled and destroyed like half a dozen times. How resilient are you? Alright, I'm sorry. I'm getting triggered. Uh, let me see here. Alright, his android body is stolen by Will Magnus's lab, or from Will Magnus's lab by Dr. Impossible. Magnus notifies Red Tornado who leaves to find his stolen android body, and Arsenal, later known as Red Arrow, Black Canary, and Green Lantern, join the search, tracking a beacon um, planted in the body. They track the signal to a remote mountain base and confront Professor Ivo, who has regained his human appearances and releases a swarm of activated tornado androids against them. After the androids are defeated and Red Tornado arrives, it is revealed that this was orchestrated by a revived intelligent Solomon Grundy. Grundy admits masterminding the plan to place Red Tornado in a human shell meant to cripple him and slowly rob him of his health and aerokinesis, although a mishap let Tornado keep his powers in the weakened form. <sighs> Whatever. Grundy has Red Tornado's android body infused with super-powered objects and one of Ivo's Amazo chips, creating an invincible shell to house his soul so he can never die again. The heroes and others pursue Red the Red Tornado Amazo android, who, thinking himself as John Smith, went to see his family. As they leave, Grundy keeps the now weak human Red Tornado separate in an attempt to kill him. Tornado, no longer a match for Grundy's superhuman strength, is beaten and mutilated. Despite his injuries, though, he summons winds to which snaps Grundy like a tree. Wow. All right. The Amazo form is slowed down by apocalyptic technology given to Kathy Sutton by Big Barda, and after recent tragedies, the JLA had armed their loved ones, um, and the heroes neutralize him. Dying, he asks his wife to rebuild the Red Tornado Android and allow him to return. Zatanna lifts the spell, trapping his soul, allowing Red Tornado to again inhabit the android shell at his death. Although he can keep Ivo's enhancements, Red Tornado devises himself in of all augmentation and joins the Justice League of America with his unusual powers. Since returning to his robot robotic body, Red Tornado has become behaving oddly, losing control of his powers and nearly, nearly killing Red Arrow. I don't know what just happened there. He becomes increasingly cold and detached from his friends and family, acting more like a machine than a sentient being. Oh my gosh. Alright, after the team's battle with the Injustice League, Red Tornado's body is badly damaged and his consciousness is placed in the Hall of Justice's computer system. With his feelings slowly return, um, he warns that a jump into a new host body could damage his soul. Even if Magnus's new shell mimics a human body, its computational abilities are inferior to his cybernetic mind, 
However, he accepts the deal for a new chance of, of life along with his family. All right. Let's see here. Do, do, do. All right. I'm, I'm looking because I'm just skipping some stuff because I'm tired of seeing him constantly destroyed. <laughs> All right. So after this miniseries, when this happened, Red Tornado is again destroyed. <laughs> in a battle with Black Lantern versions of deceased JLA members Vibe and Steel. When Blackest Night ends, the JLA reorganizes the former Titan, or the JLA reorganizes. Former Titan Cyborg is among the new members of the League, setting out to rebuild Red Tornado and claiming to be able to make him indestructible. Okay. With his new body under construction, Red Tornado is severed, but Sentient Head is left behind by Cyborg when the team leaves the JL JLA Watchtower to face down a group of villains on Black Hawk Island. While waiting in Cyborg's workshop, Red Tornado sees Green Arrow's battle with Dr. Impossible and saves the Archer's life when he attacks Impossible and his cohorts with his unfinished body. Cyborg then takes a leave of the absence so he can finish the new body. With the repairs completed, self, thanks to self-replicating nanites, he invites Kathy to Star Labs um, to rejoin her husband. The Red Tornado attacks Cyborg, begging his friend to kill him before he hurts someone. Unknown to Cyborg or Red Tornado, his insanity is the result of Alan Scott's Starheart power, which gives metahumans magical or elemental abilities. Cyborg frees Red Tornado with his Matrix, and Red Tornado accompanies the JLA on its mission to hell, where he helps Superman defeat Minos. Wow. Alright, we're almost done with this history, but this is crazy. Alright, in 2011, DC rebooted, rebooted its continuously as part of the New 52. During the battle between the Justice League and Atlantis, Tio Maru says that his weather machine can take control of the weather from the invading, Atlant invading Atlanteans, but Silas Stone rejects the idea because the technology is from another dimension, which is Earth 2, and unstable. Maru later says, but the tornado could? An unfinished red tornado is seen in the red room while Cyborg is being rebuilt after Grid takes his robotic parts. Red Tornado then faces the Metal Men. In DC Rebirth, Red Tornado returned to the main continuity in the 2017 event Dark Knight's Metal, being held captive by the Blackhawks. And during the Dark Knight's Death Metal storyline, Red Tornado, Animal Man, and Blue Beetle arrived at the scene where Robin King took down the heroes. During their fight with Robin King, Red Tornado is sprayed with a mortal coil chemical that causes him to spin out of control, become human, and rip apart. Again. Batman later revived him with a black lantern ring. Wow, this dude. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? Let me know. What do you guys think of Red Tornado's history? It's pretty crazy. A lot of really bad stories, in my opinion. Um, but like I said, let me know. You can catch me on Twitter or Instagram under Super Deep Dive. Um, DMs are always open. You can email me at b the number four it also b four it all at yahoo.com. Honestly, the best thing to do though is catch it on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, share. If you have any kind of critiques, if you have anything I missed, um, your opinions of Red Tornado. If you have requests for future episodes, let me know. Because what we'll do is we'll have a conversation and then other people can see and they can join in on the conversation and we can grow together. Maybe you guys will help me appreciate this character. Because right now, it's, I'm kind of hard pressed. But let's get into his powers. Red Tornado is an android and his creator, Tio Mar, designed him with strength, durability, and thought processing powers. Many orders of magnitude greater than a human. In terms of raw physical strength, his artificial body has been depicted moving object weighing 20 tons under optimal conditions, and his body has survived both the extremes of space and deep sea pressures. It additionally possesses the ability of self-repair. Anything less than catastrophic damage is fine. 
Uh, his senses are similarly computerized, allowing him to hear and see events far exceeding human perception. In an extreme example, he used his vision to observe the Justice League teammates attempting a low orbit rescue of Challenger astronauts inside a damaged space shuttle from sea level, though the images were out of focus and at the limit of his range. Red Tornadoes frequently monitors wireless communication, frequencies for signs of distress, though he has likened this to listening to background chatter in a crowd, remaining indistinct until someone or something draws his attention to it. So, yeah, um, that, uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm skipping a bunch of stuff because it's just like, it's just redundant. Um, because all his bodies have been able to do pretty much the same thing. Um, as far as the tornado powers, he was able to generate F5 tornado winds exceeding 308 miles per hour, or for our, um, metric friends 512 kilometers per hour which is powerful enough to snap solomon grundy in half uh, so yeah uh let's see here okay fun facts in the alternate timeline of flashpoint the red tornadoes are androids created by dr morrow uh there is one red tornado that is unfinished because of morrow's death all right, in the deceased timeline, Red Tornado is one of the superheroes seemed to have survived the anti-life equation and makes a cameo appearance in number five. He's a present in the Fortress of Solitude when Martian Manhunter assaults the fortress. Uh, Red Tornado also appears in Justice League Unlimited. This version is a member of the Justice League. He also appears in Batman Brave and Bold um, and Young Justice. Uh, he also appears in the Mad segment, That's What Super Friends Are For. And he appears in Justice League action as a member of the Justice League. Our Red Tornado first appears in a live action TV series Supergirl episode, Red Face. This version is a combat android designed by Tiomara for General Sam Lane in the United States Army to kill Kryptonians. When Supergirl unmatches the android, the Red Tornado escapes from military camp and causes havoc in National City until Supergirl and her allies thwart it. Uh, following Morrow's death, Red Tornado attains sentience but is destroyed by Supergirl. An Earth X incarnation of Red Tornado appears in the live action crossover Crisis on Earth X, and the Freedom Fighters deploy it in the hopes of destroying a portal to Earth 1 and trapping their Nazi oppressors there, but the Flash and the Ray destroy the android to ensure their allies can return to Earth 1. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. The Earth X Red Tornado also appears in the animated web series Freedom Fighters The Ray. Uh, let's see here. Our Red Tornado makes a non speaking cameo appearance in Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Um, he's a playable character in Batman the Brave and the Bold video game. He's He appears in Young Justice Legacy, DC Universe Online, is a playable character in DC Lego's um, Super Villains. And Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. Uh, he appears in DC Superhero Girls. And the original incarnation of Red Tornado appears in Smallville Season 11, Continuity Number 4. Following her death, Emile Hamilton downloaded Tess Mercer's consciousness into an android body. Afterwards, she goes on to join the Justice League. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, what do you guys think, right? I mean, it's just not, like, he's got little parts. And it's because he looks cool. He looks cool, but that's about it. Like, he's this red robot. Um, but let me get into my final thoughts so we can wrap this, wrap this Mamma Jamma up. So I believe that the Red Tornado was supposed to be a Vision knockoff. Or, if Red Tornado came first, which he may have, Vision is an improved red tornado either way i try to like red tornado like like i really really try and to his credit he is very very likable he's got cool powers um with the tornado and stuff and but you know and his constant quest for humanity like he's very likable but man he's just a bad character and and i blame bad writing for this He's been destroyed over and over, and he's kind of like this ongoing sob story. 
Like, like that's, like, I don't know if that's DC Comics' appeal for him. Like, hey, we got this character, great character design. Let's just keep destroying them. Let's keep bringing him back and destroying him. Let's keep having everything just happen to this guy. Um, Cause that's gonna be his gimmick. It's terrible. Like, how is he gonna be dismantled now? Like, that's whenever I see a story, that's what I look at with him. Like, oh, what's gonna happen to him now? And that's not like an endearing trait. That's not gonna make me buy the comics. <laughs> um, so what would I do with this guy? I wouldn't do anything. I'd have absolutely nothing. I wouldn't have him exist because the character, by its very nation nature, is a liability. He constantly gets destroyed. He constantly gets manipulated. And come on, when he first started, he was responsible for five separate comas. Too much of a liability. What do you guys think? Like, how would you treat Red Tornado? What would you do with him? I am dying to know. Like, I die a little bit inside with this. Because I'm anxious to know. Let me know in the comments. Like I said, you can always reach out to me um, via email at b the number four it also b four it all at yahoo.com. You can catch me on Twitter or Instagram under Super Deep Dive. You can also catch me on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive, where I post videos all the time. Um, like, subscribe, share if you have questions, comments, concerns, critiques, requests for future episodes. I am 100% behind it. Uh, let's get into it. Everything, I try my best to acknowledge everything. Um, but let's have into it. Let me know what you want to do with this character because I'll be honest, I got nothing. But with that being said, I'm going to step out from here. Um, at the time of this recording, it is free comic book day. I'm going to go to my local comic shop and support it. I hope you guys are all blessed. I hope you guys are all happy. I hope you guys are all safe. I hope you guys are all smart. But if you're not smart, don't get caught. I'll see you guys later. Everyone take it easy. Bye-bye.